Rebecca Rockefeller is passionate about addressing the cultural ethos of consumerism and materialism. And she has started an innovative program to do this. It is called Buy Nothing, and its platform is Facebook. You may even find it existing in your own community. Bon appetit. I'll tell you what I'm having for dinner tonight. This is my kid's favorite. It is roll your own sushi, which is like, it's a cheating. I mean, it's a total, like a travesty to any real sushi, sushi chef will be appalled and horrified. But it's really fun. Um, I just make a huge bunch of rice um, and I season it with a little bit of um, rice vinegar and salt and a little bit of honey. So it's you know, sort of my own version of sushi rice. And then we just let that cool and lay it out with um, big sheets of nori that people can cut up into any shape they want. And then vegetables and, um, you know, if you like meat, you can put whatever meat you want in there, um, you know, sort of like scrambled egg. My kids love smoked oysters and, so, and sardines, so they put those in theirs. Um, but it's, it's really simple and it's a fun social meal. So the Buy Nothing Project is an international network of hyper-local gift economies that are based online. Um, right now each of them exists online as a Facebook group, um, but the real activity of each of these groups actually happens in real life in the hyper-local neighborhood that each group is devoted to. What happens is you find your most local buy nothing group and we specifically restrict membership in each group to people who actually live in the boundaries of that group so it doesn't matter so much for our purposes where you work or where all of your friends are or the neighborhood that you identify most with it's where you live we really want to um, help people connect with their real life neighbors and in a lot of cases None of us, a lot of people don't know their real life neighbors. We know people we work with, or we know people we go to school with, or we know the neighborhood we want to move to, or we know where our friends live. But what we're after is something a little bit different than that, and it's really building networks um, between people who you could really go in the middle of the night and get help from if you needed it. So the network, so you, you go to Facebook and you look up your neighborhood name and find our Facebook group there and join it. And we have volunteer admins. In fact, our whole structure is staffed by volunteers. We don't have anyone who's paid at all. Um, and the admin will double check with you that you actually live in the, within this group's region. And then you join, once you're approved into the group, you can, um, offer things that are freely given with no strings attached at all and no expectation of any future um, payback of in any form. You can ask for things given that way from other people and you can share your gratitude for things that you've received in the group. So those are sort of the main three things. We call it our gag rule, give, ask, and gratitude. So those are the three things you can do in our groups. Right now we have, in one of our groups, we have two different people who are putting together buy nothing weddings. So there are people who really have wanted to get married and for some time they've been putting it off because it seems too expensive to them. So they've joined their group and they've realized that there are all these things being loaned and shared and offered and so they're collecting up um, their you know, dresses, decorations, glasses, silverware plates, um, tables. Um, entertainment in some cases, you know, promises of help um, and advice, um, for, you know, people who are coming sort of, you know, helping them set things up or answering questions, meeting with them in person and talking about this. Um, so that's sort of a seasonal one. It's summer, so that's something that's on people's minds. Um, we have people who ask each other for rides when they need to go someplace because maybe they have limited transportation options where they live. We have um, people who sometimes cook too much food for dinner and they offer their leftovers or they cook too much intentionally and they offer a second casserole to their neighbors. Or um, And then we have all of the standard stuff related posts. I mean, we're swimming in this material culture. So you can, I mean, almost any item you've ever touched has been offered or asked for and received within one of our groups. So it's from everything from a roll of toilet paper to 
um, literally a boat. We had somebody finally offer a boat. We had someone offer a kitchen sink yesterday. We have, um, I mean, everything, really, every, every item. Um, why are we consuming all this stuff? Why are we in this unsustainable cycle of consumption? What hole are we trying to fill? And I think my answer to that is that we are, we want to be connected. We want meaning, we want lives of meaning, we want to be connected, we want to matter. Um, and we don't get that through stuff. What we get that through is um, through stories and through building a shared narrative with people that we actually meet and get to know. Um, and I, you can't get that through a group that's just about the stuff. So we wanted to start, my friend Liesl and I decided we would start this buy nothing group where it was going to be on a social media trans platform that was really transparent. So people could see each other, we could see who our mutual friends were, we could see our real names, we would know that everybody in this group lived right here and we'd be able to build up these, sh these stories, to share these stories, to make each other laugh and to sometimes make each other cry because I mean, we have people giving away things that come out of you know, great loss, you know, the crib from their child who died really young and they really want it to go to somebody who really needs it. And I mean, there are these really poignant things and there are really funny things that come along with our stuff. And I wanted people to be able to see those stories and to tell those stories and to share them and to get to know each other. Because what I, what I wanted was a gift economy in which the real wealth that we're building is this web of connections between us so that we'd get to the point where when I realize that my lawn needs to be mowed and I don't have a lawn mower, my first impulse isn't to go and buy a brand new one, it's to look around and find one I can borrow to really radically rethink our consumption and not out of a place of having to put on this like hair shirt of environmentalism where I'm like, you know, like I'm gonna suffer so that the world can be a better place, but out of a place of joy where I'm like, I actually don't have to suffer at all and the world's gonna be a better place and I'm gonna be happier and I'm gonna know my neighbors and it's not gonna matter so much if my couch isn't brand new or if I don't have my own lawnmower. I mean, these, these status symbols are going to have much less value and the, the real status is going to be how generous am I and how freely can I receive other people? How can I let other people help me and can I help other people? And that's, that's the kind of culture that I think is, to me, seems much more sustainable and it's, it's looking at human kindness as wealth and as what we're trying to build up in our groups and not just stuff. I don't have today's numbers because it changes so quickly. So um, as of about a month ago, we had 175 groups in four different countries and over 25,000 people in those groups. Um, but yesterday we had our first group founded in, in Manila in the Philippines and so now we have groups in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, and the Philippines now. Um, and they're all run by volunteer admins who live in, in their neighborhood and they start their own neighborhood group. So they're dealing with their real life neighbors. How outlandish is it that this person I don't know is asking me, well, where do you really live? Like, you don't have to give me your street address, but give me, you know, the two closest cross streets because <laughs> we're serious about it. This needs to be a hyper-local group in order for that sort of transparency and honesty and trust to build, for people to count on that, it, it has to be based on something real and it has to be based on, it's in our groups, it's based on where we live, that's, that's it. So we have a, a decentralized lending library model. So we ask anybody who has something that they have to loan, they just get to post it, like you write up a little post. In my case, I have, um, I think I had something like 200 small glasses left over from my wedding um, over 10 years ago that were just sitting in my garage. And I thought, oh, I'll just loan those out. So I took a picture of them and I've loaned them out and they've gone to city council meetings and weddings and parties and memorial services and picnics and preschool events and all sorts of things now. Um, and I do the same with a whole bunch of cloth napkins. Um, so I loan things like that out um, and other people are doing the same thing. So instead of needing a centralized location with paid staff and a bunch of overhead, we just have people loaning things out person to person. So I can say like, 
you know, well, these are my napkins and you want to borrow them, you post. Everybody in the whole group can see that I'm loaning them. Everybody can see who's borrowing them. So there's some a sense of accountability there, which makes it a little less worrisome for people to loan things out that they care about. And um, for me, I, so I, I do things like that and I find that very rewarding. But I think for me, like the best thing I've gotten out of all of this is, is all of these people that I have in my life now that I would probably not have met otherwise. Because what happens is we ask people to use full sentences in their posts and to actually say something about themselves. Like if I post this table and, and I will say like, I'm going to give this table away, but I want you to tell me your best family dinner memory. And so everybody will write in and, you know, share their best family dinner memory and we get to read these things about each other. And so you, you'll start to see people who have you know, a similar sense of humor, or who just have a really interesting outlook on life, or who have these fascinating experiences. And I've, so I've met people by learning about them online and then l just connecting with them in person. I'll give something away and they'll come and get it, or they'll give something to me and we'll end up meeting. And then we have periodic uh, book nights, actually, at the local brewery where we, we say it's, you know, it's the books and beer night. Come, you know, bring a couple books that you want to give away, get yourself a beer, we'll all be upstairs. It's a family friendly place so people can bring kids, you can bring your own food in. So we all meet up there and just get to know each other in person. And I mean, with people inviting each other over for dinner and, and looking for people to go for walks with. and. Um, people walking each other's dogs during the middle of the day when somebody gets a new puppy and they have to be at work. I mean, there are all of these sort of gifts of self, I, I think of them as, happening now in groups. People start with stuff and then it moves to sharing their time and literally just themselves with each other. Um, basically, the Facebook factor, friends of friends. Uh, I didn't know Rebecca until about a year ago, but uh, um, friends of hers who she's friends with on Facebook, we all kind of cross-connected. Well, um, my brother Brian and I uh, had an opportunity to move back to Bainbridge after several years away last fall. Um, I have always uh, liked living light. Uh, several years ago I lived in a house that while I was away was broken into and what wasn't uh, taken was trashed and ever since then I've developed sort of a horror of having a lot of permanent possessions. So the Buy Nothing project really fit my personal aesthetic and uh, so when the two of us moved here there were a lot of basic things we needed. Um, lamps, uh, coffee maker, um, kitchenware, um, some bathroom stuff, shelving, and for the most part I put the call out on buy nothing and people came through Im immediately. I'm, everybody I met who gave me something I uh, made a friend of. I think we all, we all need tribal identity to some point and Bainbridge is one rallying point. We all feel kind of protective and maybe a little defensive about what we have here. Bainbridge has a, a reputation of being the rich people's place, which uh, I would say most of the buy nothing Bainbridge people, more than 3,000 strong, would dispute. A lot of us, every day there's a post, uh, I need you know baby um, clothes, I need, uh, I don't have a bed for my child. I don't have these basic things. There's a lot of need out there, and I think Buy Nothing Bainbridge does sort of the ancillary public service of putting a more diverse face on the island than you know the beautiful homes and gardens uh, type of facade that uh, you see in the the real estate brochures. Well, um, we we just uh, we talk and. It, like, you know, like anybody meets, let's, let's go out for a beer, let's go get a cup of coffee, let's, uh, you know, sit down for 45 minutes and figure out what our commonalities are. And generally they turn out to be quite a few. For whatever reason, I find that I connect with a lot of people in my age range. I'm 48 years old and uh, I would say um, 
most of the people I meet, you know, we have a lot of generational commonalities, generational sensibilities and values. And uh, it's really nice to connect with that. The last time I lived here on Bainbridge over 15 years ago, I worked at the newspaper as a reporter. And this is, you know, pre-social media for the most part. And I felt like I died a long, slow, lingering social death because Bainbridge, as far as I know, didn't have a lot of people like me, young, childless, unmarried adults who, you know, were here for professional reasons. Yeah. Right. Um, what I try and do once in a while, and I actually haven't done this in longer than I would prefer, but every now, every now and then I would take half a day off from my own work and uh, say, I'm going to make deliveries for people who, who can't get out and pick up the stuff that they've claimed or uh, um, people who want to get a bunch of stuff off their front porch. And so they'll give me names and addresses and I'll just go run around and, and deliver stuff for you know, three, four, five hours. So there's that. Um, I, I've responded to calls to help jumpstart cars. I've responded to calls to help people move. Someone needs a ride. Um, somebody needs this very specific book that I can dig out of my storage. Um, I, I, I have less than most people materially, but one thing I do have that a lot don't have um, is flexibility of time. I don't have to, you know, my life isn't revolve around kids. So I try and recognize that and put it to use when necessary. Um, and I've also been able to uh, integrate my brother into the community. He's, he's back here for the first time in eight or nine years. And uh, it was very important. He's not able to work, but it was very important to uh, have him meet people, make friends, to generate goodwill, and find things to do. So I think we fairly successfully established him as somebody who will go out and do some day labor for you. Um, just to uh, get to know people and um, feel like he's being of service. And I think that's been a, he just mentioned to me a little while ago how it boosts his self-confidence and makes him feel better, which makes, there's a healthy dose of self-interest for me. It, it uh, lightens my load where he's concerned. So that's a, a big win all around. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, I just happened to be on Facebook when uh, your friend Kat put out the call, and uh, I noticed that the first person to click like, like on it is the owner of this house that I'm renting, uh, Mark Zoker. And uh, so he and I had a little back channel conversation. I said, well, you know, we've got the empty room here, and I'm happy to share it if you feel like that's something you're comfortable with. And uh, he said, by all means, go for it. So. Uh, you know, I, I felt like we knew that we could offer you a place you could come and go on your own without any uh, um, any strictures. So why not? I mean, bedrooms just sitting there gathering dust. Otherwise, take every asset you have and put it to use. It's it's an inviolate principle. Well, I'm extremely grateful, <laughs> and you're always welcome in my home in Tampa whenever you get there. Believe me, I will take advantage of that. Not really, because it's really developed a reputation as the place you can ask for or get rid of even the most obscure and maybe at a glance junky thing you have there's everybody wants something whether you know it's some broken toy or you know an antique piece of tchotchke or whatever um, it just amazes me what people feel like they have a use for when I, when I moved out of my last place a couple of months ago, uh, I had several little odds and ends that I thought, well, okay, this is just a little too good for the trash, but you know, it's nothing I would try to sell. So I, you know, there was a whiteboard, there were a couple of uh, plastic trash cans, um, a, a coffee table with a chipped end. I put it all up there and they were all claimed within an hour. And in several cases, I had to do drawings among people who, multiple people who were interested. And, uh, you know, in the past, I would have hauled that to Goodwill or just taken it to the dump just to get it off my mind. And now it's in the homes of people who want and need things. And, and it makes me feel like I'm sort of uh, balancing my karmic checkbook there by, uh, 
um, because I own less materially than most people, when I can give something, I'm just thrilled to death to do it.